always liked Franco. You know, Franco's a professional. You know, he's, he's a, a very uncomplicated, simple guy. He sees things in very simple terms. He's got a great look and he was right, you know, for the moment. Anthony Quinn's a bit of a myth, so I don't know. I never really had any brushes with him. Uh, I had a couple of scenes with him, I remember. Um, you know, he, Anthony Quinn, he's a, he's a myth. I mean, he's a great, great old actor. Oh, Eli Wallach was a nice man, yeah. I, I think I made more than one movie with Eli Wallach. I can't remember now. I've made five with Franco, I think. And uh, th probably two or three with Eli. Um, oh, nice. Again, another what I call a gentleman actor. Oh, she was very sexy. Well, I never really, I may have been in a movie with him, but I, I never really worked with him. She was what she was, tits and all. Yeah. Yes, now the interesting thing is, I met him here in Los Angeles. I didn't really know him in Rome, um, but I met him here in Los Angeles. I, I mean, I, there are other movies that I remember, ex fun things happening, extraordinary things happening, but not particularly on those. Um, I mean, I, my first movie ever in Italy was with Orson Welles. Now, that was a character. Orson Welles was an incredible. The, the, the first movie I made in Italy was Te Pepe. You know what? I always had the idea that I just learnt my lines, got on set, said them to the best of my ability, put the money in the bank and went home. I actually made several movies in Italian with my own voice, which they doctored. And that way took out almost all the accent. So that worked for me. So it worked against me when they decided they were able to, to dub it. You know, that's what they did with everything. And yeah. it's a pity because it gives it a, uh, it gives it a feel, which may have also contributed to its, uh, because I think dubbing removes you. Well, there isn't, there aren't the markets, you know, there aren't the, it used to be, I remember, you could put a movie together for $235,000. Uh, and then the returns on that movie, if it, if it did more than slightly better, were about three to three and a half million dollars. Well, that was a good market. And so there was a, a lot of stuff was produced. You can't do anything like that. No. We had bought uh, a whole lot of movies which we were, we were trying to sell. That was uh, the one I had with, with uh, Chris. Chris, yeah. And Miles was a, was a silent partner. He wasn't anything, but it was Chris. It's called TSO, Trainer Steiner yeah, O'Keefe. Yeah. We started selling these movies before I knew where I was. I was being contacted by lawyers from uh, um, uh, Dino Laurentiis. They, they got it all tied up. There's nothing you could do. It was so corrupt. And I remember in the years that we were at the, the film markets, if you sold to Germany, you could more or less make $400,000. Suddenly, Wes Craven was selling one, you know, one movie after another, and he was just selling them off for 35000 each. So uh -huh. I, I tell you, I've never seen so many worried faces in all my life. That was specifically 88. That's right. Of all the movies I made, and I made while I was in, when I was in Italy, I made about 120 movies. And I would say only about 15 of those were made with direct sound. For some reason, in Rome, it was a cult movie. Everybody went to see it, they thought it was absolutely fantastic. That coincided with a holiday that I took, and I went to Rome, purely for a holiday. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly discovered everybody knew who I was. And I actually went to visit a girlfriend. In Rome? In Rome, yes, who I'd met in New York. Oh. And uh, that affair started to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And in order to stay there, 
I suddenly thought, well, all the crap that I was getting offered and was being very grand about, because of course I'd just come off a Broadway success, I'd just made a movie, uh, everybody was telling me how wonderful I was, I thought, well, I can't make spaghetti westerns. So I was turning everything down. And then, as I say, my love affair started going wrong. I needed to be there, so I started accepting things. From then on in, I never stopped. Hmm. About, I was there for 20 years, so working out about five movies a year. It's funny though, it, I really enjoyed that movie. And that's one of the, that I think was the, that's what I consider my last movie. I know I made movies after that, but I really consider that to be the last. Mm -hmm.